Are you ready for the next natural disaster or any other major calamity? Are you able to have clean running water when the power is out? Are you able to keep your family fed for an extended period of time without going to the store? Are you able to heat your home when the utilities aren't working? If you answered no to any of these questions, you need to come to the Sustainable Preparedness Expo on Sunday, May 15th at the Spokane County Fairgrounds in Spokane, Washington from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. There will be multiple seminar presentations on topics like disaster preparedness, wilderness survival, preparing for emergency medical and dental situations, water well hand pumps, fire management on the homestead, permaculture gardening to feed your family year-round, emergency communications, food preservation, making a living on your homestead, and many more practical sessions on preparing for whatever may come. Sign up for hands-on classes to learn emergency surtering, emergency dental procedures, and how to prepare a bug-out bag. In addition, there will be top-quality items available from dozens of vendors to assist you in meeting your preparation needs. We are bringing in expert presenters and vendors from around the country who will be able to answer your questions about preparedness. Admission is only $12 per person. Kids 12 and under are free. For more information, go to susprepexpo.com. That's S-U-S prepexpo.com. Come to the Spokane County Fairgrounds on Sunday, May 15th at 10 a.m. for the Sustainable Preparedness Expo, where you can learn the practice of perpetual preparedness. You're listening to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, which can be found on our website at treyerwilderness.com and also on iTunes. Welcome to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, where we are homesteading traditionally 100% off-grid today and offering preparedness and survival tips for tomorrow. Here's your host, Tammy Treyer. Welcome, everyone. This is Tammy Treyer with Mountain Woman Radio. I am here in northern Idaho, where we are having an absolutely gorgeous day and Things are progressing really well with my health. Every day I'm getting better. I'm going through some really rough spots, though, while I'm detoxing and getting all this garbage out of my system. But I'm very thankful for the sunshine because, as you know, I'm as solar-powered as my home. And it's just a really great feeling to feel the uh, seasons changing and just progressing and just celebrating life. So thank you so much for joining me today. And I am so blessed to have a good friend of mine who we've been in great communication with for at least three years uh, joining me today. And I get to have him here live and in person and to actually chat with him versus watching his YouTube videos and reading his posts. So without further ado, I would like to introduce you to Jared Stanley. And you can find him at j and j acres dot net, and that is j and the word a n d j acres dot net. And again, as always, you'll find his information in the show notes. And for those of you uh, that were looking for transcribed podcasts, that is also available now uh, with each of the podcasts. So check it out on our website. But Jared, thank you so so much for joining me today. Well, thank you so much for having me on your show, and I'm certainly tickled to hear that you're healing very well. Oh, thank you. Thank you in both counts, and yes, uh, God has been very good to me. It's going to be a rough road, but I've got a lot to celebrate, so no, no complaints here, but I'm so glad to have you. You have so much to offer my audience. You're a wealth of information, and I figured I'll just open the floor up to you, and you can share uh, about yourself and your family and how you guys got started, if you would. Okay, sure. Okay. I'll try to keep it as succinct as I possibly can. Uh, we live in a little town called Tumsuba in Mississippi. It's right on the border of Mississippi and Alabama, right in the middle of the state. Uh, we're just off of Interstate 20, so if people want to 
get an understanding for about where we are, that's where it is. Okay. Uh, we are not from Mississippi. Uh, you can probably hear it in my voice. Uh, <laughs> I don't sound like the typical Southerner. Uh, but we, we, we ended up here under a situation of circumstances. Uh, my wife and I both served in the military for a little while. We were actually living in Colorado. Um, my wife was still in the reserves. I had actually gotten out because of some injuries and was down on our, we, we were down on our luck and I was looking at getting back into the military, but we didn't have any family around us. And so we moved to, uh, the area around Meridian, Mississippi, where my parents and one of my sister and her family, uh, lives and so that Jennifer, my wife, could have some support with the kids while I re-enlisted into the military. Well, we happened to move here about two weeks before Hurricane Katrina hit. Wow. Uh, and so everything got uh, kind of turned upside down, and the, the military thing, long and short, just really didn't go through. And I found out about a position that was being offered at a local uh, naval base, and I ended up deciding it would be better to work here locally rather than get shipped overseas, and uh, I progressed in my employment and eventually got to a point where we just put down roots here. And when we first purchased our home and our land, we knew one thing. We knew we wanted to be out of the city and away from covenants. We wanted to make sure that we could do whatever we wanted to do with our land, which at the time really amounted to nothing more than having pleasure horses. Uh, we, we wanted to make sure we could do that. And we wanted to be away from the lights of the city. We wanted to walk outside and see stars, not walk outside and see street lights. Yep. Uh, so here in our area, I'm sure people have experienced this uh, in their area as well, but we have a lot of timber land here. And so usually you either find uh, a small lot at a subdivision that costs just a, a crazy amount of money, or you find really large acreage, like 200 acres or more, that might only cost you $1,000 per acre, but when you're looking at you know maybe a quarter million dollars for a piece of land that doesn't even have a house on it, it gets a little bit burdensome. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, <no> well, <laughs> so when we found this seven acres of land, uh, we, we ran for it. We, we grabbed it up as quick as we could. Uh, we had a house built and put onto it. But again, at the time, it was really nothing more than be out of the city so we could do what we wanted to. We, we never really contemplated being self-sufficient or self-reliant. Uh, uh, the word homesteading meant nothing more to me than a uh, little house on the prairie and a homestead tax exemption. Uh, <laughs> the word permaculture was nowhere in my vocabulary. Mm -hmm. And it was a very slow process over time uh, where, you know, I, I go back to where I said we wanted to be able to do what we wanted to. It's really funny. If people go on J&J &J Acres on YouTube, there's a time-lapse video. Uh, one, one of the things I was really excited that we thought about ahead of time is I purchased a trail camera and put it up in a pine tree and put it on a time-lapse mode. So it took pictures every hour for like two months while our land was cleared and the home was installed and all those kind of things. So we have a really neat record of our property uh, being established at the very beginning. But the really funny thing about it, if you pay very, very close attention, uh, you'll notice that just after the house is installed, you'll see a little blue tarp area uh, to the left side of the house. And that's where the chickens are. And a couple of weeks later is when you'll see them actually drive up there and install the rock driveway. So we actually had chickens on our homestead before we ever even had the driveway to our homestead. Uh, so, so on one hand, we never really were seeking to be self-sufficient. And yet on another hand, we took that jump right into chickens like many people do, uh, probably a little bit uh, – cart before the horse, <laughs> probably a little earlier than we should have. Um, but, but since then, uh, our mindset has changed. We have five children now. We didn't have five children at the time. Um, there, we, we've obviously set down roots in this area, and we wanted to become self-sufficient. We thought about, you know, really the, the probably the, the thought that was the straw that broke the camel's back was, what happened?
happens when all five of these kids are teenagers and we have to feed them. Uh, Anybody who does the conventional grocery shopping knows that keeping groceries in the house in that way is a very expensive thing, or you just eat the beans and rice and be happy with it. And so looking down the road was, okay, how are we going to do a better job of this? And thinking about, well, with seven acres of land, we can grow an awful lot of food, not just fruit and vegetables, but also enough land to produce meat animals and things like that. Mm -hmm. And so that journey really started right then. That's when I started um, not just having chickens because they were fun Mm -hmm. and might give me an egg or two. It, It was a, you know, a process of, making sure that I have new chickens to lay eggs each year and keeping the stock going and worrying about breeding programs for rabbits so we keep genetics right and figuring out how to build the organic matter and soil so we can have better crops. And and it really started going from there. And the, the more I got involved with trying to do this, the more research that I was doing, I'm, I'm very much a, a person who likes to try to search out the information before I put it into practice. And the more research I did on simple things like how to start a garden, the more I realized that there were a thousand ways to do it. And so uh, it was actually in conversation with uh, Tommy Alderman. Uh, We both have uh, day jobs that relate to emergency services. And I met Tommy Alderman uh, from Alderman Farms at a conference uh, for a 911 conference, uh, and we just got to talking, and and he happened to have raised some ducks called Muscovy ducks at one point, yeah. and I was telling him that we were about to do that, and we were just shooting back and forth information, uh, his lessons learned about the ducks, and uh, me kind of soaking it in, and he, on a whim, just said, well, I'm thinking about getting into this YouTube thing. I'm thinking about making some YouTube videos, and so <laughs> I, I really owe everything back to Tommy for getting me involved in doing videos on YouTube, and the way that kind of goes together is I decided that I would use YouTube as a way to show people uh, our journey so that as people started to make their own journey, they didn't have to just read it. Uh, They could see a video of it and understand, okay, this is what he tried. This is why it worked. This is why it failed. This is how I'm going to do it differently so that mine doesn't fail. This is how I'm going to do it differently so I don't spend a whole bunch of money and waste a gardening season doing it this way like Jared did and he did it wrong. I'm going to go and do it this way. So that, so that I can save myself some time. And that's kind of been the overarching mes- message throughout the whole 370 or plus videos on YouTube is, is about, you know, see how I do it. If it works, I tell you. If it doesn't work, I tell you. And then you can go out there and do it uh, with that little bit more of experience under your belt so that you don't have to jump as many hurdles as I do. Yeah. Amen. Uh, Amen. Isn't that the truth? And it's so funny. You know, we, Jared and I have been blessed to be connected with some really amazing homesteaders and survivalists out there. And it's just an amazing camaraderie amongst all of us. And that is our heart is to share and not only with each other, but with our audiences. And I just, Jared's YouTube channel is very sweet. And I want to go back and, and thank you also to both you and Jennifer for your service to our country. And also kudos, kudos to you on the timeline photos of your property. That was such an awesome idea. I have photos, but I mean, that's got to be really cool. I'm going to have to go check out your video, but that's, it's just neat to be able to do that. Cause we look back at our photos. My family laughs at me cause I'm an absolute photo nut and I'm constantly taking pictures <laughs> and they'd, you know, complain cause I'd have the camera up their nose, but later on we'd all sit down and look and it was just amazing to see what you accomplished in such a short period of time. And just overall, you know, what things look like when we started to what it looks like now, it's just, it's a really great way to journal things. Our, our pictures and our videos are such a great way to journal things, but to be able to help people and to show them our mistakes and the things that worked for us, things that didn't work for us. And, you know, it just gives people a really good place to start, like you said, versus having to read it. Cause not everybody's someone that likes to read. Uh, I enjoy a visual, my family is more visual oriented. So 
it's nice to be able to sit down and watch something. And it's great material, too, which is family-friendly, which is hard to find these days when you're surfing. And you, mm-hmm. even just surfing YouTube is kind of scary. you got to be careful what pops up. But it's good to have good, wholesome channels, and Jared's is definitely one of those. Well, I appreciate that. And, I, and I've had a couple people tell me that, you know, we're one of the channels that at the end of the day is they're trying to get the kids to wind down or something like that, that, that they use YouTube as that source of uh, free, if you will. I understand you have to have Internet access, but that source of free entertainment where they can turn it on and turn on J&J Acres and watch an episode or two of that rather than turn on uh, cable television and be subjected to whatever, not just the, the regular programming, but also the commercials and the advertising that's just poured across that. And, uh, and it really means a lot to me that not only are people searching for information on the internet and having to stumble across my channel, but that some people purposefully go there as a source of entertainment or a source of just being connected in a different way with a friend, you yeah. know, to see how your friends are doing on their property. Yeah. Uh, and, and that certainly means a lot to me that they see the channel in that kind of regard. And, and it inspires me to try to make sure that I'm putting out the kind of material that people really want to see. Uh, I have had a couple uh, videos uh, in the past. There was one where I accidentally started a what thankfully turned out to be a very small grass fire. Uh, and wow. as fate would as fate would have it, I had started hitting, I had already hit the record button on the camera, and I was about to go work on the beehive, and I had uh, uh, hit record on the camera, went over to start the smoker, mm-hmm. and just was a little foolish and careless and trying to work too quickly, and one blade of grass caught on fire, and that's all it took. Wow. Well. Of course, out of heat of the moment, I kind of shouted a few expletives if I was dancing around in the in the uh, <laughs> dancing around in the in the fire. But I understand that, that that's not what my channel stands for. But I wanted to share with people that look, you know, I don't want to put myself out there as being some kind of infallible person who thinks everything that they do on the homestead is perfect. You know, mm-hmm. I want people to know that I make mistakes, and mm-hmm. so I put that video out there. But understanding it's a family program, I was very careful to make sure to remove the, the <laughs> vulgarity that came out of me spontaneously. And so, so I hope that's something that people can appreciate about the videos as well. Yeah, and it's important, I think, because people watch us. I know we've had people comment to us, too. And, you know, they, they, they watch us. And, and think that what we do is untouchable. And, and for the same reason, I want them to realize that we are no less human than they are, you know, that we make mistakes and that we, we have errors and that things break, you know, that we're, we're, every day out here isn't a perfect day, you know. And it's important to show that, I think. And that's what makes, you know, your channel and Tommy's channel and, and our channel, you know, unique in that it's real life and, and it's um, transparent, you know, and, and I think that's important for people because there's so many people wanting and striving to do what we do at different levels and, and, you know, the more human we, sh- the more humanness we share with them and the more that we share that we have flaws, you know, the less intimidating it is and the more real it is for them to attain it. So I think that it's, it's just huge what you're doing by sharing that stuff because I think you'll reach so many more people that way. And, you know, I think that's awesome. Well, I, I appreciate what you just said there about um, the different levels, uh, if you will, that, that people have of trying to do uh, self-reliance or being off-grid or, or just general homesteading or gardening. Because you know, if, if I had felt the same way I feel today 10 years ago, I would have done things entirely differently. I, I would have strove to be Trayer Wilderness. I, I would have looked for my property in the mountains. I would have gone completely off grid. I would have built my own house and all those kind of things and, and not gone down the road of having a conventional mortgage on a home with seven acres that's, you know, close enough to a city that I can maintain a, a, a typical job and all those kind of things. But here I am, you know, I, I started down the traditional path and, and I've, I've got a day job and I've got a mortgage 
but I still want to do these things. It's still in my soul to get out there and play in the dirt. It's still in my soul to try to provide food for my family. Uh, And so I think that's uh, a, a portion of the population is in that same situation. Maybe they're even in a in a uh, a city environment, just in a uh, in a suburb someplace where they don't even have an eighth of an acre of a backyard, and they're wondering how am I supposed to keep my job here in the city because without my job I can't afford to do this, that, and the other thing. But at the same time, I want to feel like I'm contributing more than just my time to a job. I want to feel like I'm contributing by growing my own food and being more sustainable in certain ways. And and I think that's kind of the level where I'm operating at right now. I'm showing people, hey, look, just because you work nine to five, just because you're stuck under a mortgage that if you could go back 10 years, you would have decided not to get, yeah. here's what you can do. Here, here are the things that you can do. And maybe... Maybe one day, all the skills and the learning that you're building up while you're stuck under this conventional program you accidentally got into, maybe those skills and that knowledge will be something you can put to use and one day decide to escape from it all. And, you know, maybe, maybe one day. Amen. So true. And you know what, though, Jared? I truly believe that everything in our life and everybody we come in contact with happens for a reason. There's purpose in everything. And although, you know, we may not be in places where we want to be or there might be uncertainties, um, I think that we are put in a place where we can make decisions, though, from here and really embrace our dreams like... For example, some people want things, they're in the city, they don't know how they can progress, but there's so much they can do right there. One thing is being content where you are and and managing it and, and making the most of it. And the other thing is being willing to really step out in faith sometimes, like we're all, we're all afraid of something. And, you know, sometimes we might be afraid to embrace what what you know what we want to do most in life because we're afraid of the repercussions we're afraid that we might fail and sometimes i think that in holding ourselves back and not being willing to take that leap that we are missing out on the best parts of life i've coined it before saying that you know the best parts of life are on the other side of our comfort zone and sometimes you know once we take that step whether it's put putting plants in a pot in your eighth of an acre or embracing an off-grid dream. It could be something, you know, from that small to that big. But when you first take that first step, you know, you open that door to what's ahead and it all starts to unfold. And it's like you said with the chickens before, you know, that's kind of like the heirloom animal to start homesteading. You get it. Everybody says you get a chicken. Mm -hmm. I think it's, you get an animal and things just start to progress. And like you said, a lot of these things weren't in your mind at all. And all of a sudden, you know, it just progressed. It's like an addiction. And I'm like, you are, I, I like knowledge. So I'm always seeking and searching and reeducating and educating. And, and I think that's all we can do is just, you know, Make do with where we are, and if we have the opportunity to embrace the dreams that we want to, embrace them and watch things unfold, and just keep learning and educating and and finding good resources. And that's why I like sharing people on my radio show, because there's so many people seeking and they don't know where to look. There's like... um, information overload on the internet so it's good to i'm glad that you were able to make it on with me so that we can share you know good resources with people because that's what i'm really striving to do well, something that you just mentioned there you know i've i've had the opportunity to uh have been invited to speak at a couple different conferences and of course people send me emails or leave comments on the YouTube channel uh, frequently. And a common question, I'm sure you've heard it a thousand times, Tammy, is, you know, where am I supposed to start? How, how do I even be, where do I even begin? You know, it's, yeah. it's that proverbial, you know, where do you take the first bite out of the elephant kind of thing. Yeah. And, and, and I tell people, you know, look, I'm not trying to dodge your question, but really it is different for each individual person. You know, what, what is it that you really want to accomplish? And, and I like to try to talk to people about things. You know, for me, I have uh, five children. Of course, me and my wife, that's seven people in the house. Our grocery bill is our largest monetary expense. I mean, it, it even dwarfs 
the mortgage. And so, you know, I tell people that's why I focus on gardening so much because I know that if I can, if I can use gardening as a way to produce my groceries and curb that side of my expenses, then I can focus those those monies for another project, something bigger down the road, if you will. Uh, but maybe for another individual, they don't have. Uh, maybe it's the climate they live in, or maybe it's the age of their home. Maybe they have a problem with how much energy they're using, and the majority of their money is going out the door paying for the power bill. And maybe there's some other things that they should focus on there first before they bother putting the first radish in the ground. Yeah. And so I, I like to try to kind of get them thinking in, in that kind of way on, you know, where do I really want to start really comes down to, What's tying up all of your investment ability right now, whether that's your time or your money or your skills, and where do you really want to go? You know, are you looking to just be able to not have to go to the grocery store a couple times? You know, Do you want to just have a couple meals per week that come out of your vegetable garden where you can have nice salads or something like that? Or are you looking to never visit the grocery store again? Because that's an entirely different scale and involves a lot more steps in the process of getting there. Huh. But that first step is what you were saying before. Uh, you know, I, I tell people, I know it's a cliche, I know you've heard it a million times, <laughs> but you absolutely 100% have got to start small. Huh. And I think it's not just for, I, I think it has a couple different facets on why that's true, but for me, in my experience personally, I think it's true because we're very emotional beings. Mm -hmm. uh, just humans in general, we thrive on emotions, yeah. and it's the emotions, it, it's our feelings that make us want to homestead, that make us want to do whatever that we do. And if we sit there and say, I'm going to grow my own food, I'm going to be self-sufficient and never go to the grocery store again, and we haul out and we plow up a quarter acre of land and we spend a ton of money on drip irrigations and a bunch of you know really fancy heirloom seeds, and we put all this stuff in the ground, and the first season we're out, a whole flock of deer come in and eat everything to the ground. Yep. Your emotions are going to be your worst enemy. You're going to just sit there and cry over how much money and, and emotional investment that you put into that plot of land just to have an accident happen because you didn't realize there were deer in your area and that you needed to put up a fence. Yep. You know? And so, so I like to encourage people to start small because of that. Yep. I want you to feel the success of growing just one plant, just grow one plant and be able to eat off of it and go, wow, I grew that. I, I saw that as a seed. I grew it. I nourished it. And now it's nourishing me. I did that again. And now you get to have the, the domino effect of recreating a success and not having to build yourself up from recovering from a failure. That is such great advice. And the other part of that that was really great that I've never heard put that way is the way you described, you know, where to start your list and where to start based on your financial mm -hmm. and aspect of things. Um, because like you said, everybody is different. There's no cookie cutter mold to homesteading. And that was really great advice as far as narrowing it down to where to begin and, and just create lists and do it as a family, do it as a, you know, husband and wife that you're on the same page, that you know where you're headed and prioritize the things that are of most importance to you. Because like Jared just said, the worst thing that can happen is failure because we are often our worst enemies that once we fail, a lot of us will never try again, where others will continue like us who just continue to bang our head and will succeed if it kills us, but others will give up. And, and that's the worst thing you can do, and it's the worst way to start. So your advice is incredible. And just being able to, you know, embrace something of success and, and starting out small is the best way to do it, that your investment is small and you're not overwhelming yourself. So that's just such great advice. So, in realizing that, uh, yeah, I guess to take a step back from that, when I put my very first video on YouTube, I didn't really know what to expect out of it. It was a fun thing to do to be able to put myself out there and say, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. 
what do you guys think of it? What tips and advice do you have? And it slowly has evolved over time. Uh, and now people come me for tips and advice. And it's a, it's a very uh, unique dynamic. And it's interesting to see how that plays. But over time, uh, I've noticed that a lot of the same questions get repeated. Uh, there's always new people that are first they're hearing the word homesteading for the first time, yeah. and they're just wanting to get the very basic information out there. And so I've also noticed I've had on occasion where people have uh, mentioned in the video that, you know, they're not in a place where they can stream video very readily. Do I have my videos transcribed? Can they go read it as a blog someplace? And so I realized there was a quite still something to be said for the written word and not just for videos alone. And so that that's kind of uh, those two things coupled together has, has led me to start putting out a series of ebooks. Uh, and, well, at least it'll be a series if, <laughs> if it looks like it's worth the effort of it. Um, the, the first one people can find uh, completely for free on our website at jnjacres.net. Um, and in it, it's, it's the, the name of the series is called Your Dream Homestead, and the first one is actually called Where to Start, because that's always the, just the preliminary question or the predominant, rather, question that, that people seem to ask me. Where am I supposed to even start? Uh, and in it, um, uh, I have a small section, or I guess, or actually really the biggest part of the book is, uh, a section called Dispelling Fig Five Big Lies. Uh, and just to line them out real quickly here, the first lie is I have to buy many acres far from a city. Uh, the second one is we cannot afford it. The third one is I cannot grow anything. The fourth is I have no space for animals. And the fifth is I have to be a DIY handyman expert. Uh, and those are the five things I hear time and time again. They're certainly not the only things, but those were the, the top five things that I hear time and time again where people talk themselves out of trying to homestead or trying to be more self-reliant. And, and I wanted to put that book out there for free so people can get a bit of a sense of, how to look at it from a different perspective where it's an encouraging process, not a discouraging process. Yeah. Uh, and then from there, uh, if, if that has given you more confidence that, that you really actually can do these things, uh, the next book that's available is called Starting to Grow. Uh, again, that's my big thing because I am trying to cut down my grocery bill, so I feel that's where the majority of my expertise lies. Uh, and in there, it talks about just the whole myriad of methods that are available with people trying to garden. Because the next question that I get when it comes down to just the topic of gardening is, well, which way is best? What's the best way for me to grow a garden? And, of course, like we talked about before, it's all situational. You know, it's like, well, okay, well, let's talk about how much space you have. Let's talk about where you actually live. Let's talk about your climate. Let's talk about you know, what you actually want to eat and, and so on and so forth. And so in that book, I break down the major, most common methods of gardening, what their pros and cons are, uh, who it's good for, um, and the benefits of, of doing them, along with a whole bunch of other topics. But that's probably the meat of the message there is, okay, here's gardening method number one. Here's why people use it. Here's where it came from. And, and then over to gardening method two, three, and four it just keeps going on from there. So uh, if, if people would rather read about it or have some resource material to refer back to, uh, then maybe that would be something that they're interested in. Good deal, and thank you for sharing. And you can subscribe to Jared's newsletter on the side of his website by just going to jnjacres.net, and you can get that first book to just check it out and and get hooked to his series. And, Jared, before we run out of time, too, I want to um, give you the floor because I know you are working on some livestock that you will probably be selling this year as well as your um, permaculture business as well. I'd love for you to share that with my audience. Okay. Uh, this year, rather than trying to get involved into any new animals, what we're really trying to do is uh, save our pennies. We're trying to budget wisely uh, so that we can put our money towards uh, another bigger project that's kind of hush-hush right now. Can't tell anybody. Um, 
But what that means for you uh, or for anybody out there is that we're selling off our uh, the, the, the progenity of our livestock. So uh, we just had some piglets that were born. Uh, we have six American guinea hogs uh, that were recently born. We've got another set that's going to farrow uh, probably within the next month. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of Muscovy ducks and all those kind of things. We've got a couple uh, goats that we're still waiting to kid, and we'll be selling those uh, babies. And we'll still probably be keeping around all of the parents. Uh, we're going to probably keep them around for a little bit longer. But rather than try to feed all the little mouths, we're going to go ahead and sell those off. So uh, if anybody is uh, in the east, uh, central Mississippi area and is interested in what we might have available and the going prices on everything, uh, there's a contact form at jnjacres.net uh, that you can reach me for on that. Uh, and as far as permasapien goes, uh, I know that's probably a strange word to most of your listeners. Uh, it's a made-up word. Uh, if you go to permasapien.com, uh, which if I try to spell it off the top of my head, even I'll get it wrong. It's a combination of the words permaculture and homo sapien. So it's permasapien.com. Uh, uh, you can go on there and learn more about what that's all, we, uh, all really about and where it came from. But what it amounts to is the permaculture side of uh, J&J Acres. Uh, I went through the permaculture certification course with Jeff Lawton, uh, who's a premier permaculturist uh, out of uh, Australia. And uh, I used the knowledge that I gained through that certification to go around and design people's homesteads using the methods that are prescribed in permaculture, uh, which uh, is really hard to try to uh, put into a short message because uh, while many people have uh, some one or two liners trying to describe permaculture, it always leaves something a little bit short, a little something a little wanting in the description. Uh, it's it's in one hand, it's a method of landscape design. On another hand, it's uh, uh, very much about sustainability and making a site that is in harmony with nature uh, rather than humans just constantly withdrawing things from nature. We talk about how to make your, your homestead site something where you're putting things back into nature as well. Uh, a, a big focus on use of perennial things rather than just annuals. Um, right now, I'm scheduled to go and give a uh, wild edible uh, tour, uh, a walking tour at uh, the Mississippi, I'm going to say this wrong, Mississippi, um, oh goodness, Natural History Museum, I believe, okay. uh, in Jackson, Mississippi, in July. Huh. Uh and uh, have been contacted about a couple different projects. Some might be a little bit out of my range for me to be able to travel and actually accept to be a part of the project. But uh, if for some reason somebody wants some consultation about uh, how to use permaculture, uh, how best to design a property so that it gives more abundance in production with causing you less activity. You don't have to put so much energy into the system. Uh, then you can go over to permasapien.com and look up my contact information there uh, in case you're interested in the consultation about that. Awesome. And it's P-E-R-M-A-S. A P I E N dot com. And I, you have a link to that as well on your J and J acres dot net as well, correct? I do. Yeah. Okay. So you can find it, you know, jump across that way as well. But Jared, thank you so very much for joining me today. We are running out of time, but this was been has been so awesome and you shared such a great deal of information and everybody Jared's links will be in the show notes and um, when you're on his website you can link up to all of his social media join him he shares a lot of great materials has lots of great conversations going on and definitely subscribe to his YouTube channel like we were talking your family will really en enjoy it and what a great way to you know, spend time with your family when you're actually learning together as well because you can really inspire your kids to want to embrace gardening and varying different things when they see, you know, other people doing it. And it's a great way to spend time and it's a great way for kids to unwind. So just some thoughts there. But Jared, thank you so very much for sharing all your information today and joining me. You're very welcome. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh. My pleasure, and when you have more going on and you have additional books to your series, let me know. We'll get you back on here so you can share that again and share with my audience some more. But 
Thank you. I really appreciate it. And everybody, thank you so much for joining me today. It is Spring is on the way. Make sure you uh, get involved in gardening. If you're new to gardening, check out uh, Jared's fa uh, YouTube page. And just plant a plant in a pot and tomato plant or beans or lettuce and watch it grow and get your get your hands dirty and get in the dirt and get out there and enjoy the wonderful weather. It's really rejuvenating. But thank you guys so much for joining me. And you guys take care until our next show. God bless. You're listening to the Mountain Woman Radio Show, where you will learn something new every week. We hope you enjoyed the show and encourage you to join us at TreyerWilderness.com. And be sure to connect with us on iTunes. Remember, your reviews on iTunes are very important to us and help us reach more people just like you. 